Chapter 26 Sea Prayer by Khaled Husseini In this chapter, we're providing you with our second poetry review book on Between the Pages. We'll share with you the importance of this poem and the message that lies behind it. We'll clarify how every poetry enthusiast should admire the work of Sea Prayer. We post on Wednesdays. Turn the page. Welcome to another chapter of Between the Pages. If this is your first time joining us on our podcast, we welcome you. We are your hosts. My name is Nisma. And I'm Hanin. We host this podcast together where we review books and recommend them for you. We usually have non-spoiler chapters for those of you who want a spoiler-free review of a book. And spoiler chapters where we simply review the book down to every last detail. However, starting from this year, we're going to combine both non-spoiler and spoiler in one chapter. Today we have Sea Prayer by Khaled Hosseini. For those of you who don't know, Sea Prayer is a short, powerful, illustrated book written by Khaled Hosseini in response to the refugee crisis. Sea Prayer is composed in the form of a letter from a father to his son on the eve of their journey. Watching over his sleeping son, the father reflects on the dangerous sea crossing that lies before them. It is also a vivid portrait of their life in Homs, Syria, before the war, and of that city's swift transformation from a home into a deadly war zone. So, the idea of the novel is, uh, sorry, not novel, of the book, poetry, of, of, the, the, poem. of the poem, is um, for the little boy... Um, it was inspired by the story of Alan Kurdi, uh, by the three-year-old Syrian refugee who drowned in the Mediterranean Sea trying to reach safety in Europe into September 2015. It was uh, during that time there was like a picture on social media and like the news and all over on the articles news. like a little boy washed up on shore. And that kind of inspired uh, Khaled Hosseini and Dan Williams, I think was his name. Mm, the illustrator. The illustrator, yeah, Dan Williams, to come up with this book, with a poem slash art um, book. And whoever bought the book, the money went to a charity um, who helped those refugees find homes and food and shelter and um, clothes to wear and... First, when I f- bought the f- book for the very first, from the, the, the time I bought the book, um, it was on discount, so <laughs> it wasn't as expensive. Yeah, it wasn't an, our annual book fair here in Egypt. Yeah, it wasn't as expensive as it used to be. I don't think I would have bought it with the original price. It is mm. a bit pricey. Um, but I guess it's it was... a. L- it was worth it in the end, mm. you know. I feel like I was so. Why would why is Nisma buying a poetry book? This is so <laughs> like her. So, like, yeah, it is don't read me. poetry, and I'm, no. I didn't know the story behind it since then. You know, until now, when I read it for the podcast, yeah. and I realize it's all based uh, on the tragedy that is war. <laughs> yeah, and it has a lot of themes of nostalgia war death fatherhood lost childhood Mm -hmm. the works (laughs) it's like this is not going to be a light chapter actually because of the topic um like a lot of people have lost their lives like they're on the back of the book it says four thousand four thousand six hundred something souls were lost at sea or died at sea because of that, you're holding it in the wrong way. Yeah. <laughs> 4,176 died at sea or like in an attempting to get away from the war in Syria. And this wasn't the first war in the Arab world. Like there was countless others. Countless other, others in Palestine, Iraq, Iran even if it's in the Arab world. Anyway... <laughs> 
I should have paid more attention in my social <laughs> <laughs> social studies class. Social studies class. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we're here. Mm-hmm. Um, for those of you who haven't read the book or still want to read it, we'll let you know when to stop listening to the episode. <laughs> Yeah, we will take this chapter from the perspective of trying to analyze uh, the poem. Yeah. And try to relate his use of figures of speech or... Imagery. Or imagery or stanzas and lines and breaking them to what we know of the conflict that was happening. Mm Mm-hmm. So, which is not very much. <laughs> in a general way, there um, the book starts out very hopeful. Um, even the illustrations reflect that. There's like fields of flowers, and um, the colors are more vibrant and mm-hmm. vivid, and, and a bustling city. Yeah, and the words that are used are more have a more of a positive connotation to them. Mm-hmm. And then the poem shifts immediately to a gloomier tone with, like, even the illustrations have more of a gray tone of, like, black and there's less color, colorful. More shadows. More shadows and more, like, brownish, grayish tones. So to, to really illustrate and to really show, um, how negative um these things go and i was quite surprised actually because i was worried going into this that it was not really up to date you know mm. this was written 5 years ago yeah and i was worried that it wasn't going to be relevant but it really is it i the conflict is still on people like are still so living many people. in camps and yeah those who survived and others have built their life in yeah. countries that might still and no definitely they still don't feel at home of course yeah this is no because like i was a, i was aware of the fact that this book was speci- written for a specific event mm-hmm. that happened five years ago so i was uh, not really sure if this is the kind of thing we should do right now but turns out it is pretty relevant mm-hmm. it's not really related to one event it's more global and yeah. related to all kinds of immigrant situations where I think all of the immigrants can relate to this poem. The idea of like leaving your home f- to find safety somewhere else. And when you f- when you go to that other place, you have other problems to deal with, mm-hmm. with like people who uh, don't understand. Don't, yeah, or don't understand you. They didn't put themselves in your shoes at all. Yeah, exactly. It's always that cliche, like go back to where you came from mm-hmm. kind of stuff, you know. This poem really shows you um, what what they go through and what they feel. And just with, like, a couple words, you yeah. know? He's not really narrating anything. He's just, like, with just a couple words, he's really, like, piercing your heart, like, mm-hmm. through and through. <laughs> yes. But I love that he addressed it to a boy. It from was, a father uh-huh. to a boy. To, yeah. From to a, a father son. to son. And in a form of a letter, mm-hmm. a narrative letter, sort of. Yeah. Of um, like memories and mm-hmm. events that are described in a unique way, you know, and the putting there the it's it's like he talks to a really young boy, and you can see in the choice of words the level of like. Not maturity? intelligence, yes, maturity, you know, yeah. know, what, how he put himself at the same time in the shoes of this boy, you know, yeah, of how he sees and names things around him. Mm-hmm. I like that. So I think we can get into the actual poem. Mm-hmm. So for those of you who haven't read, read it yet and still want to get it and buy it, then this is where you should stop listening (laughs) for those of you who have the book you're welcome to grab it right now and open the pages that we have some thoughts on (laughs) yeah so starting with sadly the pages don't have numbers so you'll just have to guess okay so the first one that really caught me was 
We woke in the mornings to the stirring of olive trees in the breeze, to the bleeding of your grandmother's goat, the clanking of her cooking pots, the air cool and the sun, a pale rim of persimmon to the east. I love the picture, the picture that he's painting in this stanza, mm -hmm. and it's so wonderful and so sweet and so peaceful. I think it's uh, the the calm before the storm, as mm. you say, <laughs> and the memory that I think most of us will have. Yeah, yeah, like uh, the clanking of pots in the morning, Which waking is, up to this, you yeah. Know? And what the bleeding of your grandmother's goat? Oh, <laughs> you can not really, really but like yeah, not really. But you can. He's really painting a picture. You mm -hmm. know, you can see it. You can see it and happening. Hear it. Yeah, and hear it exactly. So of course we have an onomatopoeia, figure of speech onomatopoeia. That's where you can, um, uh, the word clanking. That's the word like sound mm -hmm. where you hear the word the sound exactly as it is written mm -hmm. and you can hear it like when a word buzz. has a sound yeah. yeah like the word buzz mm -hmm. or um there was another one Shh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah shushing yeah so and then of course the whole stanza is um visual imagery like it's all visual you can really see the uh, or steering of the olive trees you can imagine there's a tree with mm. like it's way like waving side to side and and a um, light breeze yeah and um there is auditory imagery where you can hear the clanking of our cooking pots auditory as in you can hear it and the bleating of the goat you can hear it as well so mm -hmm. that's auditory imagery yeah so, yeah, you can really see how still hopeful, really hopeful it still is at the beginning. And like you said, calm and yeah, unassuming, calm and you peaceful. know, it's everyday life. Yeah. So moving on to uh, this I one. I think that part, yeah, yeah. That one's yours. It was right after the shift, I think, in the tone of the book. Mm -hmm. I loved how suddenly it shifted. Yeah. Like. Of course, like if we put this on on a realistic context, it's so horrible to from one moment to the other, your life is upside down. But yeah, it was the part where he said, "The skies spitting bombs, starvation, burials." So simple, but yes. it's like so scary <laughs> and the illustration is so like it looks like rain falling from mm. the sky but it's not really yeah and i love how random the streaks are it's like really like spitting like someone's spitting and on them chaos the chaos utter chaos right and personifying the skies as, as someone spitting someone spitting exactly yeah and there is the and like the sound of it skies Fitting. the alliteration there makes it like ss ss because that's like sharp and straightforward yes. yeah yeah so the next one is a you know a bomb crater can be made into a swimming hole oh. you have learned dark blood is better news than bright so this one really hit me hard <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah, like it's so sad. It's really sad. It's so sad. Like you can see to be playing in a playground at a club or Yeah, and you can see in the painting mm. um how children are like playing around in like heaps of stone and mm, rubble like, and look at the houses how they're destroyed and mm. and the sky is still pretty um like bright Ooh, yes and it's bright, so bright yeah. like this is a normal day maybe it's sunny and great weather like on a day where you would have your children go to the pool for mm -hmm. example you know but this is their situation you know and then this is the sad part so in the first two lines we have you know a bomb crater you you know a bomb crater can be made into a swimming hole which is a euphemism in this case, because you're making something bad sound good. Like the bomb crater, which is literally where a bomb fell down to earth and shattered everything. Um, comparing it to a swimming hole, like a swimming pool where mm -hmm. children can go swimming in. Yeah. So, euphemism. And then the second two lines are visual imagery. You have learned dark blood is better news than bright. Because of the dark blood, that means it healed 
there's like usually when you have dark blood it's like crust you know mm. when it's like already dry and it's like crusting that mm. means it's healing the wound is healing but bright blood means it's still bleeding so you they're bleed either bleeding out or dying basically yeah, yeah. so yeah it's it's um it really paints a picture yeah and the way to say dark blood and then it translates to us as healing mm -hmm. you know uh wow yeah and the page right after that hanin you had something to say <laughs> i feel like i'm in front of a class <laughs> yep <laughs> your homework where's your homework hanin <laughs> You have learned that mothers and sisters and classmates can be found in narrow gaps between concrete, bricks and exposed beams, little patches of sunlit skin shining in the dark. Again, with the imagery, but this time with light, you know, and shadow and... Yeah. I like how there's like a glimpse of hope in there, you know, mm -hmm. like even though... It's tiny. With all this... Like mm. destruction, people still find a way to stay alive. Yeah, and I love the the usage of skin and light. It's like it means life in general. Mm. Like y you see skin, light on skin, and then you feel you see when you are in the situation, and you see a dark hole, mm. and there's light coming in, and then you yes. see skin. You feel like oh, someone's alive. <laughs> yes. You know, like you feel like yeah. so. There's this hopeful idea of but the first you can see the contrast like the first couple lines are like very depressing and then the second the second half is very hopeful that yes. mothers and children are still alive and trying to find a way and classmates and sisters the idea of people you know yes are beneath a building mm -hmm. and the 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 you his constant use of you have learned or you learned it's such a dark tragedy that a child would learn this, learn. this would be yes. the knowledge he accumulates at this age you and know think this thinks that this is his reality yes yeah that this is what there is you know yeah this is what's life about you know mm -hmm. even in the previous one they said he you have learned that bomb craters can be made into swimming holes the word learned appears again yes yeah. again yeah uses it all the time and i don't know it's the surprisingly is the 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 word that most hit me yeah it's like learned you learned it i don't know <laughs> <laughs> no you have a point you really do yeah and in this part this part is where we learn that his mother or the mother is not with them she had already passed he says your mother is here tonight marwan with us on this cold and moonlit beach, among the crying babies, the women worrying in tongues we don't speak, Afghans and Somalis and Iraqis and Eritreans and Syrians, all of us impatient for sunrise, all of us in dread of it, all of us in search of home. I have heard it said, we are the uninvited, we are the unwelcome. We should take our misfortune elsewhere. And there is, again, the idea of imagery and sound and sensory and mm -hmm. visuals with them feeling the cold, them hearing different tongues around them and, like, the, confu and the confusion. And, like, with the visual of the moonlit, you know, something as romantic and quiet, but in that moment, it's... It's cold and yeah, and like lonely, scary. And no, yes, yeah. and scary. It's like they're stranded there with only darkness behind them, mm -hmm. and um, and before them as well. They and say, before them, exactly. He's like, I have heard we are the uninvited, so yeah. he knows that where he's going, he's not gonna be welcome. Yeah. So it's like it's terrifying. Exactly, but all he can think about is making a life for his boy. Yeah. And I love the repetition of all of us, all of us, all of us. It created this feel of unity. Unity, yeah. exactly. And even before it, he says that there are different nationalities, but they are at one in this horrible situation. Yeah. 
And then their unity again is emphasized when he says that they are the unwelcome and the unwanted. So they're sort of alone in this together, you know. Yeah. It's, and after that, I come around with yeah with the lines. Um, but I hear your mother's voice over the tide and she whispers in my ear. Oh, but if they saw, my darling, even half of what you have, if only they saw, they would say kinder things, surely. And, you know, something about this poem makes me want to say everyone who is, like, against immigrants and hates them to the core should, like, have an appreciation to this, you know? Mm -hmm. He should really really pay attention to the lines like we are the unwel we are the unwelcome um if if they had exactly like the mother just said if they had only seen what they have seen they would say kinder things surely and this is really the the core message of this poem mm -hmm. it's trying to tell you that always be kind especially with these people because yeah. they have gone through so much like you can't even imagine what kind of stuff. And you would fall apart if you probably saw half of the things they have, you know? And to really have someone come to your country in hope of a better future, and then you come and tell them that they be don't belong here, they already know that. Don't you think yeah. that they go every day to bed wishing they were home? Yeah. Wishing that they weren't here? Wishing exactly. that they could have the life that they wanted? But they, but they can't, because if they go back home, they could die, literally. <laughs> and maybe they home doesn't even, their home doesn't even exist anymore. Maybe the building they lived in is not even there anymore. So yeah. really, Khalid Hosseini really did our society, every society, a, a kindness in writing this, this poem, really. He did really something very, very beautiful. I think it's the core of being a refugee. Is yeah. The essence of it is in this poem. Yeah, it is. It is. And it's so beautiful and raw, you know, yeah. and raw. And we have um, auditory imag imagery and whispers in my ear. You can hear the mother whisper the words into your ear. So that's one thing. This part is really I the best I image I I found in this uh, poem because it describes the baby, you know. It's, oh, you know, yeah. It's so innocent and it's killer. Mm -hmm. I look at your profile in the glow of this three-quarter moon. My boy, your eyelashes like calligraphy, closed in guileless sleep. I said to you, hold my hand, nothing bad will happen. Here is where it hit me, the idea of parental heroism, of mm -hmm. like, them against all odds want to save their children and now they have to be the superhero, you know? Yeah. They're, that they're, that child looks up to. Because basically the child in this situation, he doesn't understand what's going on. Yeah, and, and he doesn't have the means to protect himself from anything. Yeah, or yeah. the awareness, you know. Yeah. It's just the parent who knows the situation and he holds that burden on himself. And usually heroes hold burdens, like mm -hmm. carry burdens, burdens, I mean. <laughs> but I love the, um, the, the simile... And that, that had created an image as well of, uh, here, your eyelashes like calligraphy. Yeah, it's I like, love that line. It's like... The beauty of yes, it. Yes, the yeah. beauty of it. Because when you see calligraphy, you see... Swirling lines. Swirling and, and, and yeah. Nice art. art. You see art. Yes. Yeah. And it's basically... And he sees this beauty and innocence in his child, I yeah. guess. Yeah. And then if you picture this, the glow of the three-quarter moon, so the, the three-quarter moon mm -hmm. is like basically his eyes closed, closed. and yeah. then it's highlighted by his eyelashes in ah. a crescent shape. It's so, it, it could be painted, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of painting, the, the illustration on this page is heartbreaking. Like I can see him. In the 
rule of thirds part of the image carrying his boy I think the image before it like led my eye to that part of the page mm -hmm. when you turn it before you even read the words I, I love, love how they yeah. transitioned it you I know? love that yeah and I love how some pages are very simplistic with the art like a lot of white negative space mm. and then the picture so the the eye falls onto the picture but then another page is like com the two pages are completely painted mm -hmm. so it's like you, you're overwhelmed with the picture itself and that's really clever from the artist what he's done you because know? it's still this this is message it, is, it, is it like empty or is it full so yeah is it is it positive or negative you yeah. know the idea of is it this or this you know <laughs> it's the chaos and this like it's conveyed through this through, technique yeah. yeah like through like yeah. fullness and emptiness kind of like and the fullness can be emptiness and emptiness can be fullness so mm -hmm. it's like <laughs> the chaotic <laughs> whichever of... you interpret it yeah. <laughs> um after that we have yes he said in the page before that, he said, I said to you, hold my hand, nothing bad will happen. And then he says, these are only words, a father's tricks. It slays your father, your faith in him, because all I can think tonight is how deep the sea and how vast, how indifferent, how powerless I am to protect you from it. And again, with slays your father, we have a visual image and as well as a personification of faith is personified as someone who can slay, as a human who can fight back or s slay you with a knife or whatever. When I th hear the word slay, I picture a knife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and another personification with the sea, because he says uh, how powerless I am to protect you to protect you from it. So he's personifying the sea as someone who he can protect his child from because we know ha that the sea is vast, it's huge, and one human being does not stand against it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's this idea of, again, it turns, it like we go full circle back again to the idea of um, parental heroism and how much the father is trying to help his son. He even says, um, like, hold my hand, nothing bad will happen, even though he knows that he can't protect him from everything. He mm -hmm. even tells him, but these are only words. Words don't mean anything unless he can do something about it. But he knows that words are the only thing he has to comfort his son, mm -hmm. you know? And a father's tricks so he's tricking his son into believing that everything is fine nothing bad will happen even though he can't make these promises but he makes them anyway because he wants his child to feel safe and to feel loved so it's exactly like eat this and you'll grow up fast or you'll be strong yeah or, yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, or or you know those um like if you don't eat this up i don't know uh the the monster will, will come, come and, and bite, bite you, you in your sleep or your <laughs> yeah but more darker of course. yeah darker way darker i guess we this was all we had to say for this uh lovely poem if you enjoyed it we enjoyed it a lot reading it mm -hmm. and i think poetry is going to be a, a recurring thing recurring yeah, thing on our, our podcast, podcast yeah, yeah. This poem made me feel a lot of things the news couldn't make me feel or reports or mm -hmm. documentaries, you know? It's yeah. Just... And if you have any other poems or poet poem collective books, <laughs> <laughs> um, books that are a collection of poems, that's more like it, um, you recommend them for us because we have no idea. <laughs> yeah. We don't usually buy those kinds of books, but I know about Milk and Honey. That's, that's all mm. I know. There was another one. Yeah. Milk and Honey is a very famous one. <laughs> so maybe we will do that one. Maybe. But I'm thinking maybe we can get it in the next book fair or something. You know, it's on script as well. We can really, yeah. Oh, then let's and stop pick on script. Fine, let's do that one. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, thank you for joining us for this and episode, see you and in we'll the see next you. Chapter. Yeah, chapter twenty-seven 
I want to say 27. <laughs> huh. I think it is 27. Maybe. I've lost count. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> anyway, bye. Thank you for making it till the end of this chapter. We hope you've enjoyed our review on Sea Prayer and that we've maybe tempted you enough to buy the book. For next time, we have brought to you a review on a very popular read this year. You guessed it, Crescent City by Sarah J. Maas. We can't wait to share it with you guys. We post on Wednesdays. Mark the page for chapter 27.